We have a bunch of new game news from Halo Infinite's co-op campaign to a Black Panther game, all the way to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer reveal. So let's get into it. All right, guys, before we jump into this, if you're new here, which I see a lot of you are, you enjoy this video, consider hitting that subscribe button to help this channel grow. So Halo Infinite's online campaign co-op has finally entered into flighting. People have been playing through it. And now we have some more information as to just how you're going to be able to connect with people if you want to jump into the campaign co-op. This isn't a really big deal because previously within Halo, they've never really had the feature of matchmaking to jump in to the campaign to play with other people. But they are now confirming with Halo Infinite that you will have to have people on your friends list before you jump into co-op if you want to play with somebody. And Xbox confirmed this saying online matchmaking will not be available with final co-op we encourage you to continue to use the halo lfg and the new discord voice call feature on xbox to find players to party up with as you continue playing the beta so interesting thing here i would say more so than them not having matchmaking is they are encouraging you now to use discord voice which is something that they are just bringing out now with the insider skip ahead program where people are going to be able to actually voice chat via discord on their xbox the first console to have it which i think is a huge thing especially with the ecosystem of xbox where they are encouraging crossplay they are encouraging you to play with people who are on pc if you're playing on xbox so that alone i think is a good thing but it's funny because obviously that pushes people away from the xbox live party chat system that they have integrated within their console obviously that's still going to be something people still use a ton but discord is the most prominent the biggest way that people communicate and play games together on pc and it coming over to xbox i've said before i think is a big deal especially because they have announced this before any other console out there even when playstation pushing out their big announcement partnership with discord people thought that the voice chat was going to be coming to playstation first and obviously that was not the case it also just brings cohesiveness to the ecosystem so you have a friend playing halo infinite campaign on pc and you want to connect with them you can use the xbox live party system if you are have an xbox account and you are logged in there but at the same time what if somebody is playing halo infinite via steam which a lot of people do a lot of people still buy these games on steam to play them you're now going to be able to just use discord to talk to them rather than have them sign in to xbox they're still going to be able to jump in and play with you and another thing to keep in mind with this if you're somebody out there saying hey i have no friends to play with i would love to be able to just match make and play with a random because i want to play with another person to get achievements or just help you clear out different parts of the map one thing that xbox does have and i'm sure there are many communities online that you're going to be able to find there's a looking for group that you can actually go in there on your xbox and tell people that you're looking to play with somebody you'll find people to play with you'll be able to add them as a friend as we go through the comments here this person says makes sense doubt i would want a random to co-op a sandbox with and the reply to that is if you don't have friends like me that play this i'm screwed and the person replies no you play single player then but you don't have to play single player you can actually do the looking for group thing and i'm sure you'll find somebody to play with. And this person even replies out here saying, if you don't know about Xbox, there's a feature called looking for group and it sends out a broadcast message that Xbox users can check. And if they want to join, they can. I've met many people this way and I've had amazing results. So that's fine. A lot of games I've done this for. And so have I. I've used before for like the division two doing raids and that type of stuff. It's easy to find people to jump in and, and to play with. I think the bigger issue right now is they got to get working on that couch co-op for the Halo Infinite campaign because that's what I really want to see to be able to play it with people in the same room. One of the biggest surprises I think in the fighting games genre has been multiverses and for me it's a surprise for a couple of reasons. The first one being is that it's similar to a Smash Bros type of game and I've always thought there it's going to be really hard for any other company out there to compete at all. With super smash bros we've seen like things like playstation all-stars try it and it just really failed because it just it's hard to compete with such a well-known franchise with such a huge loyal base that loves these brawling style of games most of them are going to be playing super smash brothers as it is the premier game and now we here have multiverses which seems to do be doing extremely well and it isn't even officially released yet it is currently in closed beta but as of today it's an open beta for anybody out there that wants to try it out it is going to be a free to play game and we can see the success so far of this game in closed beta 
where it has had over 60,000 users concurrently playing the game, which is more than any other fighter ever. So this is according to Steam DB. They had a peak concurrent count of 62,000. 433 all playing multiverse and this was during the closed beta to get access to the closed beta you either had to get twitch drops or you had to actually buy the founders pack bundle which could cost between 40 and 100 dollars and i mean that's already a ton of players who have paid for this game when it's going to be free to play but the game itself looks really cool i'm definitely going to be jumping in you just take a look at the roster that they have and they are going to be adding more people to this game as well they just recently added lebron james and rick and morty and it's just thinking about all of these different characters across these different universes going at it and fighting is extremely exciting i mean that's the allure of super smash brothers and it that's an extremely good game but i like how this one's more of like a 2v2 style it's less chaotic and i feel like this is a game that's really going to take off on twitch and in tournaments and all that type of stuff and see how it competes head to head with super smash brothers i'm excited to see it moving forward and to finally jump in and try out the open beta all right jumping over here to some information about call of duty modern warfare 2 and the multiplayer reveal it is now seemingly going to be revealed in September. So there was news, there were rumors going around previously that I think it was going to be revealed at some time in August, relatively soon actually, but now seemingly from these leaks, this is from Tom Henderson, who is known for these types of leaks and being right on a lot of this type of stuff. And he is saying here that the reveal is going to be revealed at the beginning of September, just prior to the official multiplayer beta, specifically saying an early September multiplayer reveal will be consistent with the last two years of reveals with Black Ops Cold War multiplayer being revealed on September 9th and Vanguard multiplayer being revealed on September 7th. And that's just under two months before the actual official release of the game on October 28th. So if there are some major issues with it, they're definitely gonna have less time to actually fix it and make sure that it comes out properly and this is going to be a massive call of duty i'm excited to try it out depending on where you're playing you have to wait a little bit for the open beta because playstation still has the marketing right so they're going to be getting the open beta first but then you know everyone's going to have an open beta i think about a week after playstation gets it and i guess the big question on everybody's mind on my plume cast people were wondering and have the question is will the deal close for activision blizzard and xbox before call of duty modern warfare 2 releases and if it does close from everything we are hearing that it could potentially close at the end of august or after august in terms of what the ftc has to do if they don't come back with any more questions the european commission if they have no questions seemingly they're all on that same timeline and if there's no issues the deal closes what does that mean for call of duty modern warfare 2 is it going to come to game pass is xbox going to pull everything out of the bag to make sure that they can get this game as a premier game release for the subscription service and all of those questions could be for naught if the deal doesn't close and instead closes when they originally thought it was going to close which was going to be sometime in 2023 by june 2023 and i personally think that if xbox has a chance even if that means paying a little bit money to break some sort of contract with playstation in terms of the marketing deal they have to do it if they can get this game out onto game pass sooner rather than later especially with going into the last four months of the year with massive games coming out such as god of war ragnarok which is going to be one of the biggest games of the year exclusive to playstation if xbox can get a huge game well a game that's going to be bigger than god of war overall with the amount of people that play it and the amount of people that are going to be excited for it across the entire industry they can get that onto xbox game pass early in the fall i mean i think that's going to be a massive draw for a lot of people when they go out and choose what console are they going to be picking up? What console are they going to be buying for Christmas and all of that type of stuff? All right, 10 things off, two pretty big game announcements. First of all, if you are looking forward to the Lord of the Rings Golem, they showed off this trailer back on July 8th, gave us a glimpse into the game. And it looks like a pretty cool game, like a stealthy style of Lord of Rings game as you're going around as Golem, going through the world. Some people had issues with the way that it looks seemingly it looked not like a huge AAA game, which I mean, it is coming from an indie developer, so I can see that. 
But if you were looking forward to this game when it was supposed to release on September 1st, 2022, it looks like you're going to have to wait a bit longer as they have put out this message here delaying the game saying, first of all, we would like to thank all of you for your patience and support so far over the last years. Our team has been working hard to bring you a remarkable story in a breathtaking world filled with magic and wonder. We are dedicated to meeting our community's expectations and uncovering the untold story of Gollum in a way that honors the vision of J.R.R. Tolkien. That being said, in order to deliver the best possible experience, we have decided to push the release of the Lord of the Rings Golem by a few months. We will update you with an exact timing in the near future. We are grateful for our passionate community and we cannot wait to share this unique adventure with you soon. So the game is delayed for another couple of months. It's interesting because they literally just two weeks ago put out that trailer that I was just on. And again, double down on the September 1st. 2022 release date which they're obviously not going to make now but i mean these delays are something we're very used to now within the industry it's something that seemingly happens with pretty much every game it's almost like if there isn't a delay now you're more surprised than when there is a delay but we'll have to wait and see how this one all turns out if you are interested in golem if you're interested in lord of the rings so if you're somebody who's been looking forward to tactics ogre which is an unannounced game it's an unannounced remaster of the classic one that came out on the super nintendo as well as on the playstation portable when it got remastered from the super nintendo version i think in 2011 or so and this is rumor has been swirling around that they are going to be bringing out tactics ogre once again it looks like they are officially actually going to be doing this as the leaks continue to pile up for it as it has been found on the PlayStation Store. Now, Tactics Ogre Reborn was trademarked by Square Enix back in April. It had briefly shown up on the PlayStation Store previously in June, and then it was removed. But now, it seemingly looks like it has shown up again, but this time it has a full description as well as screenshots. And here are some of the things it says in the description. So. It seems like it's going to be based mostly on the 2010 version, saying it's going to have improved graphics and sound, as well as updated game design, bringing to life a new Tactics Ogre that remains true to its roots. But it also apparently looks like it's going to be basing some of it off of the 16-bit version, saying the unparalleled details of the characters and backgrounds from the original Tactics Ogre 1995 version have been painstakingly recreated in high definition. The cutscenes will have full voice acting in both English and in Japanese, and the music has been recreated with live performances and you can go down here and you can see the screenshots for this game so i think this is something that a lot of people are going to be excited for and it's only showing up on the playstation store here's hoping that when they do release this game they do release it on xbox as well with square enix you never know you never know how much money playstation has paid them to keep it off of xbox if you think about things like final fantasy and the upcoming final fantasy 16 but this is one of those games that, I mean, I would see people on Xbox definitely playing. And it'd probably be a great game if Xbox wanted to go out and get more Japanese games over to the service to spend that money to get this game as a day one release on Xbox. But Tactics Ogre, it looks like it is coming. It isn't officially announced but from everything we are seeing. The announcement probably is going to be imminent. And then finally, we have some pretty big news regarding another Marvel game that seems to be in development. This comes via Jeff Grubb. And the game in development is a Black Panther game titled Project Rainer. It's going to be developed by a new studio headlined by X monolith VP Kevin Stevens and published by EA. It looks like it's going to be an open world single player game where the player becomes the new Black Panther. And it is early in development, which I mean early in development means that we aren't going to see anything about this for a very long time. But if you are a Black pa Panther fan, you should be excited about this to see what it's all about. Yes, it's going to be published by EA, but it is... A new studio so this new studio is going to be able to prove itself with this game i feel like this is one of those games again yes I'm, i don't hope xbox goes and buys everything out there and takes all the games for themselves but i think it's one of those superhero games that if it's available you have to go out there and try to get this game into xbox game pass to compete with something like spider-man and something like wolverine that are going to be exclusive to playstation this would be a great opportunity for them if i was over there at xbox i would be inquiring more about this and seeing if a deal can be done because this is going to be a massive game if it is done well it's a very popular character an open world single player superhero game is exactly what xbox needs in the repertoire of video games so pretty exciting to hear more about this I hope soon, even though it is early in development, maybe next year or so, we get some gameplay and see what the game is all about. But that's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all of these game rumors about Black Panther, about Tactics Ogre. Do you think Xbox should reach out and try to get these games into the ecosystem and onto Xbox Game Pass? And what are your thoughts 
on multiverses as well as halo infinite's co-op not having a matchmaking if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're new here and you liked what you saw consider hitting that subscribe button thank you all for watching thank you for your support i'll catch you in the next video